Uh, what does the sun have to do with Jesus? Well, strap in, huh? All right, let's see it. Around 3000 BC, Egyptians worshiped Horus, the sun god. Horus was the god of the sky, not of the sun. Though their right eye was the sun, their left eye was the moon. Ra was the sun god. The only time Horus was associated with the sun deity was in the conflated figure of Ra Horakti. Horus was born on December 25th from the virgin mother Isis. There is absolutely no connection whatsoever made in any ancient Egyptian text between Horus and December 25th, and Horus's conception was achieved through intercourse between Osiris and the reassembled mummified corpse of Osiris. And in some of the graphic accounts of that intercourse, uh, Isis had to magically regenerate a phallus in order to achieve conception. And his father was Osiris. The eastern star shined in the night while three kings traveled to adorn the newborn savior. Horus became a child teacher at 12. He was baptized at 30. Horus had 12 disciples he traveled around with. He healed the sick and walked on water. Some of his nicknames were the light, God's anointed son, the truth. Um, he was betrayed by Typhon and was crucified. He was buried for three days until resurrected from the dead to ascend to the heavens. The only thing said in that clip that is accurate is that Osiris was Horus' son. Uh, there is nothing else in there that is supported by any ancient Egyptian text whatsoever. Hmm, that sounds familiar. That's because all those details were fabricated entirely to sound familiar. Yeah, pretty wild stuff. There's also some more religious figures that reflect these attributes as well. You have 1200 BC, Greek mythology, Attis, born from the virgin mother Nana. On December 25th, she was crucified, dead for three days, and resurrected from a tomb. So this is not accurate. There is no relationship to December 25th. Uh, there is no mention of anyone being a virgin. Uh, there is no crucifixion. There is no death for three days. There are two things that are kind of close to being accurate here. One is resurrection uh, because this was an agricultural deity that was associated with the changing of the season. So there was kind of a death and a rebirth that was common to a handful of deities that are somewhat problematically referred to as the dying and rising gods. Uh, of the ancient world. Now, uh, as far as their birth goes, Attis was conceived when this uh, daughter of a river deity named Nana picked up an almond and held it to her chest and it disappeared and she conceived. And that almond grew from an almond tree that sprouted from the spilled blood of a deity named Idistes. And Idistes was a deity who had both male and female sex organs and so was feared by the Olympian gods who managed to trick them into accidentally castrating themselves. And the blood from that castration spilled onto the ground and resulted in the sprouting of this almond tree that provided the almond that provided the conception of Attis. 900 BC, there's Krishna of India, virgin birth, Eastern star, perform miracles, resurrected. So Krishna, also not born of a virgin, uh, Krishna's parents were Devaki and Vasudeva. Uh, none of the other stuff is accurate there. Lots of people did miracles in the ancient world ostensibly. And uh, Krishna did not resurrect after their death. They left their physical body and ascended to deity. Then there's 500 BC, Dionysus of Greece, virgin birth on December 25th, traveling teacher, miracle performer, turned water into wine, resurrected. Some nicknames he had were King of Kings, Alpha and Omega. So none of these claims are supported by any text from the ancient world, uh, except for the fact that in some traditions, Dionysus was thought to have been torn apart and eaten by certain gods, but that there was a heart left over and that Dionysus came back to life, uh, regenerated from that leftover heart. The notion that that is a resurrection or that that in any way inspired or influenced the development of the Jesus tradition is nonsensical. And then you have 1200 BC again, Mithra of Persia, virgin mom, December 25th, 12 disciples, miracles, dead for three days and resurrected. And the day to worship Mithra is Sunday. 
absolutely none of these claims about Mithra are substantiated by any text from the ancient world. The closest we get is that sometimes people mistake Mithras, the Roman version, for Sol Invictus for two reasons. One, Mithras was given the title Invictus in the Roman period, as were many deities, and so is confused for Sol Invictus. The other is that the two deities sometimes appear together in iconography, and so some people mistakenly insist that Mithras was Sol Invictus. And in the late third century CE, after Christians had already identified December 25th as the likely date of Jesus' birth, Sol Invictus began to be celebrated in Rome on December 25th. So there is a mistaken indirect link between Mithras and December 25th. None of the other claims are substantiated in any way, shape, or form. Okay, I get the point. What about Jesus, though? Okay, so Jesus is simply the latest and most popular solar messiah personification. So there is no such thing as a solar messiah personification. Uh, the whole concept of a messiah developed within Judaism, and the solar associations with Jesus are later developments within symbolic and iconographic depictions. They have nothing to do with the original development of the tradition regarding Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. Born in Bethlehem on December 25th from the Virgin Mary, the Eastern Star, three kings adorned his birth, child teacher at 12, and was baptized at 30, had 12 disciples, and performed miracles, crucified, dead for three days, resurrected, and ascended to the heavens. God damn. So these claims all derive from a 2007 conspiracy theory movie called Zeitgeist, which is based on pure and utter fabrication. There's virtually no truth to any of this. I have noted those claims that are either true or somewhat close to being true. None of the other stuff has any uh, factual basis whatsoever. And this final image that is shown with the uh, stars of Orion's belt and Sirius and the sun, that is also pure and utter nonsense. And I address that in my video number McClellan 1139.